Today is probably a day filled with a bit of anticipation, a bit of nervousness for what's coming ahead, the physical trial, the emotional and spiritual. Uh, and today, of course, is Anzac Day in Australia, the 25th of April. And it was 100 days ago that the Anzac soldiers stormed the shore at Gallipoli. So today's already an emotional day, and that's the start of my Camino. Talk to you soon. So here we are at the end of day one, and I uh, actually made it, which was quite surprising. I was thinking the uh, injury might play up and uh, I'd actually have to bail out in the first couple of hours. The first bit of climb out of Saint-Jean is fairly tough, quite steep, but I sort of took the approach that uh, I'll just keep going slowly and steady, and don't stop because <laughs> your legs might seize up. So I think I've been going at about two k's an hour. Anytime I come to a really steep stretch, I just say, go slow, step short, go slow, keep going. It's a very, very steep climb to get up here. And uh, I think the best way to tackle that was just to keep going, slow and steady, slow and steady all the way. And um, yeah, I was quite su quite surprised. The, the walk wasn't uh, that difficult. It was just the, the injury made it awkward. I would not do this without walking poles particularly going up the hills. It was interesting, um, very quiet, walking up, um, just the occasional sound as other pilgrims were, were passing by and a brief Bon Camino and a quick chat where you're from. Uh, but today has been glorious, and look at the weather. It's uh, just incredibly still, uh, not a lot of sound other than the animals and the other odd pilgrim walking past. So, uh, Enjoying it. Um, really, really peaceful, and although a tough walk, really enjoyable. So, uh, a great first day, and it's pretty cool just walking up here, bumping into a few other pilgrims. The sound of cowbells, donkey bells, and all sorts of animals. It's really cool, enjoying it. Awesome experience, very easy to just kick back and chill. It's amazing sometimes when you look back, you just realise how far you've walked and how far you're capable of walking in quite a short time. It's about three k's to go, I'm really just feeling it hard on the feet, so uh, I thought I'm not going to push it. I actually stopped on this park bench, got the shoes and socks off, put my feet up in the air for a bit. I've got my uh, I guess ankle compression sock on. What I've done, I've actually managed to get some uh, hypers wool in there as well. There's a few hot spots under there. Yeah, today was just a head down day. Uh, it was only 17 k's, I think. Uh, that, that seems like a warm up now. And I did that in three and a half hours with a half hour break. I have a chat with Matt from the way. And uh, yeah, it was just, just felt like I wanted a little bit hard walk today. So down, pump, 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 pump. It's the final steep section. This stuff's pretty, pretty awful to walk on, to be honest. A little ankle turning. And uh, I can kind of begin to imagine what it'd be like in the wet. They're really very slippery. My poor old feet are not doing so well today. So when they say stop, you yeah, stop. So I'm giving them another icing. Let the socks dry out a bit. The socks get hot and damp. That causes blisters. But I don't mind stopping here because I get bread and chorizo. I think the last two hours are probably the hardest I've had. Uh, steep descents on very rocky ground, 
rolling your feet backwards and forwards. My feet are like jelly now, like there's no strength in them at all. I was putting all my weight on my poles. I find on these longer days I just have to stop more frequently in the afternoons and uh, you know, ease the foot and that kind of thing. This is getting frustrating. The uh, downhill sections are really becoming painful just here. I wonder if there's somewhere that will make me slimmer. That was asking me this morning if I've lost weight. It's hard to tell, but I think so. That was a struggle. I found that really hot. And Pat, if you're watching this, sweetheart, I have got to be losing weight in this weather. This is hard work. <laughs> but you know, it's a funny thing. I feel like I wouldn't be able to walk a step tomorrow. But you get your boots off, have a bath, good night's sleep, and funnily enough, you recover. I'm making sure that I take it easy. This will be the third time I've had my boots off. The uh, heel's playing up a little bit, so just elevating the feet. Give me 10 minutes of that, rub the socks out, and then I'll have a drink and get on. I have to say I've arrived in slightly better shape than I expected. The last time I did this distance I was totally wrecked. That's because the last four or five k's were on road. This was all mainly on sender, that um, fine gravel, which is a bit easier on the feet. But uh, you know, the last few k's were still a bit of a struggle. So I'm going to go put my feet up, and look at the route for tomorrow, and rest. Today was a, uh, a bit of a long day. So I've got a few days left to go, and I've got to try and hold myself together. We'll see how this goes. You know, one of the things that people tell you about uh, doing the Camino is listen to your body. I find you've got to check in with your body regularly. So I was slowly plodding up the hill in the heat and thinking, mm, back's okay, but I'm doing a few little exercises on the way to help that. I think that's one of the secrets, you know, you'll listen to your body and not sort of think, oh, it's only three k's, or push, 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 push. Because it's you know, 700 to go, you can't stop around. Uh, that second week was very much about um, you know starting to let go just accept what happens uh, and really getting into the sort of emotional and spiritual part of the journey that second week was probably my best part of the Camino spiritual side, uh, more beautiful churches, uh, went into a beautiful church just outside Puente Lorena, right at the beginning, and the priest was in there holding a service with some of the nuns. I don't know what, what draws me, I mean, I'm not generally a very religious person, but I almost go into every church I pass, and I go into at least at mine every day to say a prayer of thanks for just still being able to do this, keeping me going. Yeah, just really grateful for the experience. The first thing I like to do when I come to a town is to come into the church. And whoever's up there, just say thanks for another day on the Camino. And please let me continue. My first port of call, as usual, entering a new town or village is to the church. Just to say thanks for allowing me to undertake another day on this great journey and look at this place in Castro Harris. Said my prayer and dropped my rock. Dropped a few other rocks for other people. And just had my little moment at the top there. Yeah, oh, I've, I've gone through all of these great experiences. Um, deeper connection with myself and, and perhaps developing a bit of faith. Uh, I have to say this is probably one of the moments of the Camino. 
I hope it is when you do your Camino. Everyone I've spoken to has had highs and lows. And everybody at some stage has said, do I really want to continue this? Is it time to go home? Uh, just, just work through it, that's, that's natural. But I, I've had this you know, a few days of really being glum, thinking, well, what's going to happen in the next two weeks? Have I just got to walk every day? Because this is getting pretty monotonous. Um, so I gave myself a kick up the backside and, and got on with it. And um, I'm now you know, sort of reconnected with the whole process and the walk. And... I was uh, talking to someone walking yesterday and sort of saying, OK, so what comes after this? It's pretty hard to go back to the real world, I think. And I was thinking, I wonder when you get bored walking the Camino. How long do you have to walk before you start getting bored? I think it would take me a fair while, to be honest. And on the emotional side, I was feeling a bit down this morning. Um, feeling a bit guilty, to be honest. I'm wondering, is this really a very selfish experience? Do you leave people at home and they're having to deal with challenges? My wife Pat's dealing with a lot of challenges at home with father's help and you kind of feel guilty being, being away a bit. You know, it's funny how the weather affects your mood. Yesterday was sort of overcast and a bit grey to start with. Today, not a cloud in the sky, really sunny. I just can't wait to get on the road. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Strange day today. I think you need to expect on the Camino that you have good days and bad days. And I don't mean that as it doesn't have anything to do with the terrain really or the distances. But it's, it can be a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I've had a couple of bad days. Might be another one. <laughs> I'm probably thinking too much. <laughs> I'm walking on my own today. Time to reflect on the things that I was thinking about up at the cross. I would just say, don't, don't expect there to be bolts of lighting, lightning and revelations and things, but do, do walk with an open mind and an open heart and just kind of see what happens. And I think a lot of people don't do that. Um, and, and, you know, just be accepting of whatever's going to happen. Uh, and sometimes amazing things do happen. Stopped to have a look at this beautiful view. A lot of people do Saint Jean Pierre de Port to Roncesvalles in one day. It's about 27 k's. This is getting up to the highest point now of the walk over the Pyrenees. Now this is more what I imagine the Masata would be like. Flat. We're up on a plateau. You could just look and gaze at this all day, couldn't you? <clears throat> I just want to enjoy the view while the sun's at this angle. How cool is that? Not only have I got a window, if they happen to have any jousting tournaments on in the next 24 hours, I've got a ringside seat. Now the way this always works out, you see this place is on a hill, we get to the bottom of the town, and wherever I'm staying is at the top of the hill. That's how it works. interesting view of traditional values and village life. This is a really nice little village. Oh, let's make sure we're staying here tonight. It's great, isn't it? Well, we made it to Alto de Perdon, which I think is the hill that follows it. Uh, it's getting quite chilly now. So here's a, a well-known statue on the Camino. We're uh, just into Galicia here. Getting a pilgrim bent into the wind heading for Santiago. This is a really delightful little village. Town. A place I definitely want to come back to, I think. And for those who love the movie The Way, do you recognise this building? I'll see if I can pop in side later. 
This is the building where he got his bag stolen, apparently. So just having a quick look at Pomparada. I've had a very nice bit of background music while I have my coffee. Oh, look at this place. This is without doubt the nicest town that I have come to yet. This is a really cool place. It's kind of a um, really old little village. A few people live here looking after the albergues and the cafes and things like that. Did Don Suero actually defend the bridge for a month by hurtling up and down the bridge on his horse with his lance? And a surface like this would have been quite tricky, I thought. So tonight's stop is Cacabellas, uh, which is just uh, the other side of Ponferrada. Nice little place, nice place to stay, good food. So I'm not sure where Pilgrim Central is in this place, but this bar has a bit of noise coming from it. And there's a few seats out here. This could be it. There's a few people lying down there with backpacks and then you generally find some of the cafes on the way in. There'll be a whole bunch of pilgrims. And then we just swing around here, have a look at some of these views. Isn't that an incredible church? So all of them, they have their own Simon because when they write down the gospel, they start with something that has connection with these animals, okay? So we call it this, when we speak about art, tetramorphos. In the Greek, in Greek, tetramorphos. Fourth place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that's a, a very important thing because are you going to see this during the Camino? It sadly almost gets to the point where you kind of don't notice these. There's just so many of them. Incredible architecture. Look at this magnificent building. The Camino goes right past it. So it's a little church I've just been into, which I think is one of the oldest churches on the Camino. And uh, the village of Osebrero is absolutely charming. Look at it. And uh, I just stopped in this village to check out yet another magnificent church, 13th century, established by the Knights Templar, built in 1221. And it's been, was added to over about 500 years. Really sensational building. You know, one of the really interesting things when you walk in the Camino is that you meet different people every day and you think they're behind you or they're ahead of you and then suddenly you meet them again. So who are we walking with? I'm uh, Chris from England. And Sarah from England. Yeah, and what was your name? Martin. Martin. Bosco. Bosco. And Helen. And Helen from New Zealand. Dave from Brisbane. Dave from Brisbane. Andy from Gumps. Gar Gimpy. <laughs> from Gimpy. <laughs> Chrissy from Gimpy. Chrissy. The Gumped. Nicole from Queensland. Yeah. Brisbane, Sanford. And, and you're, you're, you're kind of... I'm Margaret from... Um, Broken born and bred in New Zealand and now live in Broken Hill. Yeah, we'll let you call yourself an Aussie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Merida from Merida. Broken Hill. So my name is Richard. Richard. You do. Yeah, and what did he say? I am. Yeah, and where are you from? I'm from <laughs> And... <laughs> are you Aussie as well? No. No? And how long have you been walking? Uh, since the 27th of April. And look, they're modelling the arm axe all the way from New Zealand. People rave about these. So you're, you're telling me you're, you're walking like 25, 30 kilometres a day? Around that. That's Maybe amazing. sometimes only 20, sometimes 30, 30. Yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. We've been 
making a pretty slow time. Yeah. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 73. You're kidding. No. Wow. I thought you were about my age, 57. And, uh, in 94, I had a triple bypass, and I've had two other heart interventions since then. My wife had a... Are you sure you should be doing this? <laughs> a place to die is any. It's better it be, than most. It would be. Hola. It's like a school trip. Well, umbrella. Now, I was thinking cold drink. What were you thinking when you saw the umbrella? Better not be in pictures. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's hilarious. Did you take a day off, though? <laughs> there yet? No. She <laughs> says if Keith Urban comes to the house, I have yeah. to leave. Oh, wow. So is this, is this your first Camino? It is. It wow. is. So, so we don't need money. No, no. The, no. Intention, the, the, the intention is understand money is creation of you. Mm. Money is only for buying. Yeah. See, you understand energy in the life. Mm. Life is sharing. When you more with energy, mm. your life is more better and the life the others is more that's true. So what, what would you say to people who are thinking of doing it? Don't! Do it. Do it. Do it. It's been amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's more beautiful than I think we yeah. have read about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the social side of it is We've sensational. Of I've, I've noticed you're getting into the social side. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, so if people were thinking of doing it, what would you say to them? I would say to give yourself plenty of time and to come yeah. with an open mind. Yeah. And that it's probably harder than the movie says it is. Bring come in off. Buen camino. Buen camino. Hola. Hola. It's wonderful. It's, it's great, magical. isn't it? Isn't it great? Yeah, we're having a great welcome. time. And también hice el camino de Santiago. Sí, Santiago. <laughs> Buenos días. I think you need to be you need to be settled in your life, but yes. you also need to be settled in your mind to make the journey. That's another thing. <clears throat> yes, you, you must be settled in your life, and then you can make the tour. And if mm. you're happy, you you might also be a little more settled in your mm. mind. <laughs> and have the time, and have the time just to accept, uh, hope, accept hopefully, the Hopefully, yes. Mm. Because it ain't that, it ain't that. That's right. <laughs> Remember it, I'll That's go right. Santiago. That's right. <laughs> I think you're making a lot of people happy here. I, I look many people happy, yes. Good. I look many, thousands. Right. This is good, I look many people happy. One great... The, the generator of the wind, the electricity wind. Mm. Yep. This is the name. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, it's move. David, to stay here. Uh, you, human move. Yeah. And create wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For more. This is a uh, Wow, that's a good way of looking at it. You understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The we, wild. We go on and spread the happiness. Yeah, <laughs> one film and this you, and the, it's yeah. move life. Are we there yet? Yes, finally, we are. There's a, certainly a degree of sadness that the journey is coming to an end. So here we are on the very, very final stage. Can't help but think that maybe there's some things that I haven't done, things that I haven't thought about, things that I didn't do during the uh, doing uh, during the journey. Everyone walks the Camino in a different way. Walking the Camino like this. It's almost like training for life. Uh, you learn about yourself, you learn more about life, you learn more about interacting with people, and maybe you find faith. Absolute clarity about you know, inspiration, insight, and, and incredible things happen during my journey. I feel sad that this part of the journey is over, but, but very happy that um, I thought I'd learnt a lot um, and, and that I'm going to 
think get enormous benefit from this journey um, and, and just really take that forward. This whole Camino was about the journey. It was never about getting to San Diego. Um, it was all about time for contemplation, meditation, if you like. Um, I'm really looking forward to just hanging out in San Diego and seeing who's turning up and sharing experiences with people that I know. Just taking time to chill out in Santiago and uh, been into the cathedral and hugged the apostle and been down into the crypt where his remains are. Yeah, it's a nice place uh, certainly for a day, I, I guess what I'm saying is a minimum of a day, uh, just to relax before you head off and do whatever you're going to do. Argo to me isn't the end, it, it's, it's just this particular journey, phase one of this journey is over perhaps, but then you know, I'm really keen to see what happens after this. So if you're thinking of hanging around in San Diego after your Camino, it's a pretty cool place, and you get these little groups of people who sort of are meeting up and doing all their farewells, it's all rather nice, so I've done a bit of that this morning. This does feel a little bit more like the end of the journey. If you are going to you know, think you're walking a Camino and, and you're doing it for, for sort of you know, emotional, spiritual reasons, I really hope that happens for you too. Just leave yourself open to it. You probably will. Hi. Uh, no, this is not the Camino. Um, I thought I'd just keep um, a few blog posts and videos going um, post Camino just to um, I guess see how things were going and uh, how things might have changed um, so if you've been following the blog uh, hopefully you'll find this of interest so I finished the Camino two weeks ago tomorrow and uh, what I'm doing now is um, Pat and I have uh, a sort of second home in Bangkok and uh, she was here while I was walking my Camino, so I'm spending 10 days or so here uh, before heading back to Sydney. So it's been a nice chance to chill out, so hence the, uh, the Bangkok scene rather than the Camino one. And I thought I'd just talk for a moment about the transition from the Camino sort of back into the real world, if you like, um, because a lot of people find that quite difficult, and I think I talked about that a little bit when I was in Santiago and the feeling sometimes that people feel a bit let down um, or you know something's missing so um, this is purely from my perspective but I guess what I found over the last week to ten days is that you do need a transition time um, I can't imagine just finishing the Camino and then walking straight back into work that would be really difficult because if you think about it, you've been walking for five or six weeks in a very, very different environment. You've had a very different routine. Um, if you're like me, you walked alone, um, so there was a degree of isolation uh, with a lot of time to sort of ponder and reflect and contemplate. And, and I think you do need a transition before you, you get back to work. So this has been ideal for me, um, really just to kind of chill a little bit, get used to being with lots of people again and, and lots of noise and distraction. Um, so I thought I'd just talk for a moment about the sort of three elements that I've mentioned a few times during the blog, uh, and that is the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. I suppose from the physical sense, uh, what surprised me was that I kind of just stopped. You, you would think when you've been walking every day for you know five to ten hours in my case, 
that, that would kind of build up a routine and you'd want to maintain that. Um, what I actually found was that it was the, almost the reverse. And I think it's because when you're walking, you, you're sort of, you're very highly motivated, the adrenaline's going, you're really sort of pumped up every day. And when you lose that sense of purpose, the reason to actually go through that, you know, very physical uh, sort of thing every day, um, I found I actually just stopped and I didn't really want to do anything physical. Um, so that was interesting and I think it's really just the body saying, okay, you, you've been doing a lot for the last six weeks, just calm down, chill and, and relax a little bit. So I've, I've slept an awful lot um, and, and I've started noticing all sorts of aches and pains um, coming up since the Camino. But it's probably just the, the, the body wanting to relax and rejuvenate a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's probably mainly the, the physical thing. Um, now I'm feeling I want to be more active, so I've, I've had a good chance to have a rest. Um, on the emotional side, um, yeah, my wife Pat remarked, you've come back a bit like a monk. <laughs> what she meant by that was that um, I'm still sort of being quite contemplative and, and reflective, um, and perhaps not as gregarious as I was before I went on the Camino. Um, and I think that's, that's part of the, the emotional transition as well. Um, again, you've, in my case, I was alone a lot, um, not interacting with people a terrible amount. Um, and, and I'm kind of now transitioning to having lots of people around me and, and interacting more. And, and I'm, I'm sort of still processing a little bit, I guess, um, what I was thinking about on the Camino. Um, there's a lot going on around me, there's a lot of distractions and, and that takes a little bit of getting used to. So again, I, th I think that's a really important part of the transition. Whether you're doing your transition at home or, or you're, maybe you're staying on in Spain somewhere, I, I, I think it's probably quite important. Uh, and then lastly, probably the, the spiritual element. Uh, again, if you, if you followed the blog, uh, you'll know that that was quite a, an important part of my Camino and, and quite a key feature of it. Um, that's probably less intense now, and, and I think it's, again, just that sort of transition period and thinking about it a little bit more, uh, but certainly still there. Um, and, I, and I think the, the important thing that I'm thinking through at the moment is that I'm, I'm recalling those really fantastic moments on the Camino, whether that was physical, emotional or spiritual, uh, and sort of replaying those and thinking, I don't want to lose that, and, and how do I take that forward now? Um, into the rest of the journey and, and uh, again I've mentioned this before I tend to think the Camino is really just a training ground to um, enhance your life for the future uh, and, and so over the next few weeks I'll, I'll be making sure that I don't lose those lessons and start putting some things into place and some plans in place so um, apologies that it's sort of taken 10 days to um, put anything else up on the blog but I think I just, I just needed that time to, uh, to come down a little bit and think about it, but I'll put some more up soon. So as I mentioned on the earlier video, uh, I'm just taking some downtime on the way back to Sydney uh, here in Bangkok, hence the, uh, the background of the Chow Praia River, which is um, about 100 metres from where Pat's family lives. So this is a nice place to come and chill. And uh, one of the things I've been reflecting on during my sort of transition back home uh, is, is what I learned on the Camino. And um, I'm act one of the reasons I did this blog was so that I could almost record everything for my use as well. So um, I I'll be going back certainly and having a look at a lot of those blog posts and videos to, to remind myself of what was important to me when I was actually walking. And I, I suppose if someone was to say to me, you know, what was the big revelation? What was the big thing that you learned? Um, it's probably this, and it's not that astounding, in that you need to be very clear what you want out of life and what's important to you. And I think it was the day walking out of Grenon for me, uh, that beautiful Camino day, beautiful weather on my own, um, where it really came to me. And the thing that came to me very strongly was happiness. Simple as that and all of the things that go to support that. Um, so that can sound a little bit selfish. What do I want out of life? I want to be happy. Uh, but if you then take it to the next level, you say, well, what, what would make you happy? Um, 
certainly personal happiness, but the happiness of those around me, um, my wife, my family, it would be very important. Uh, and then to the broader extent, um, making my clients at work happy, making my work colleagues happy. Uh, and what's very important to me is, is we do a lot of work uh, helping those in need as well. So I think the key theme for me, which came out of the Camino, was get off the treadmill, don't be focused purely on what you do, but focus more on who you are and what makes you happy, um, and from you know, get a much more fulfilling life through that. So, um, yeah, not exactly a bolt of lightning, but um, that, that took me a while, a while to realise that, that, that stuff and money and status and all that sort of stuff really wasn't that important. But that was a, a big change for me. So um, the key for me now will be translating all of that into what happens in the future. Uh, what does that mean to my personal life? What does it mean to my work life? Uh, and how can I, particularly how can I transition now at my age in life um, to not working so hard, sort of being semi-retired uh, and, and enjoying life a lot more. Um, I enjoy my work, but hey, I guess what I've realised is that there is a lot more to, a lot more to life than, than just work. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about how these plans come together because this kind of puts me on the spot as well. That's the reason I like to share this on the blog. Um, it's a little bit like giving up smoking, isn't it? If you tell everyone you're going to give up smoking, you kind of got a commitment, and people are watching you. So uh, I know a few family and friends are watching this. So um, I, when those plans start to come out, come together over the next couple of weeks, I'll, I'll share those as well. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting home now and uh, starting the, the next phase of this journey. Uh, the Camino is only the first bit, of course.